much for being here this evening. Uh, bienvenidos a todos. Gracias por venir. Ya quiero introducir a nuestro traducir y también un director asistente de Kip University Prep, señor Gutierrez. Gracias por su apoyo y talento. Thanks for being here, uh, Mr. Gutierrez. Uh, he'll be helping us out with translation this evening. Before we kick things off, um, I want to introduce a couple other members of the KIPP team we have here with us tonight. Team, uh, please give us a wave when I call your name. We have our, uh, our advocacy teammate, uh, Jackie Perez here. Hey there, Jackie. And then our fearless leader, the regional superintendent of KIPP Texas San Antonio, Mr. Alan Smith. Thanks for being here today, Alan. Thank you. Uh, finally, we would just want to make, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to type any questions that you have for our team into the chat or the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen, uh, screen, and we'll have time at the end to get to as many of them as possible. Mr. Buenas tardes, padres de familia. Les damos la bienvenida a esta asamblea virtual donde estaremos compartiendo con ustedes información muy importante. Antes de comenzar, queremos... Eh, recordarles que esta presentación va a ser grabada en dado caso que requieran eh, verla de, de, eh, en un día posterior y queremos asegurarnos eh, que estén conscientes de que pueden hacer preguntas en el cuadro del de chat que tienen en su computadora. Estaremos contestando estas preguntas al final de la sesión. Gracias y bienvenidos. Before we dig into our featured topic this evening, I want to pause and just celebrate with you. Uh, what our Kipsters have been able to do and accomplish this year with your support is just amazing. It has been uh, a truly incredible year uh, and a challenging one, uh, but I am so proud of all of the things that we've accomplished together. Together as a family uh, and a team, you, our students, uh, our teachers, our communities really come together and learn despite a global pandemic. Uh, as we approach the end of this difficult school year, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for everything that you do to invest in your child's education. We really couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Antes de comenzar, quisiéramos darles las gracias por todo su esfuerzo y su apoyo en este año tan complicado para nuestros estudiantes. Lo que han logrado en estos meses ha sido Impresionante, no hubiéramos podido lograr esto sin su apoyo, sin su confianza. Y nuevamente, gracias por estar con nosotros. Here's our agenda for this evening. Uh, we'll give a few updates for KIPP Texas San Antonio, and then really the bulk of our time will be in a community con conversation together uh, with, with uh, Regional Superintendent Mr. Smith. Then we'll have time for some questions, uh, some answers, and then we'll close out and take a survey and talk about next steps. Esta es la agenda para la presentación de esta noche. Estaremos hablando eh, sobre las actualizaciones perdón, de Kip San Antonio. Nuestro superintendente estará platicándonos sobre estas actualizaciones y otros temas importantes, así como el, equi el equipo de defensores de la región. Y terminaremos con preguntas y respuestas. Y seguido a esto, tendremos una encuesta para ustedes. All right. We still have room for students. So we have a limited number of seats available. So if you know someone who uh, wants to invest in their students' education, uh, wants to see them climb the mountain to or through college, uh, have them apply. Here are some links, here's some contact information. We'd, uh, we'd love to hear from them. Queremos comenzar diciéndoles que aún tenemos cupos para el siguiente ciclo escolar. Eh, si tienen alguna algún estudiante en casa o conocen a alguien que quiera tomar esta oportunidad y ser parte de KIPP, contáctese con nosotros o llenen las aplicaciones. Les recordamos, aún tenemos cupos para el siguiente año escolar y aquí tienen la información. Se pueden comunicar al teléfono que ven en, en sus pantallas o enviando un correo electrónico a la dirección que también aparece en la pantalla. All right, let's go ahead and head to the next slide. A couple of observances this month. May is special for uh, a number of reasons. We're celebrating Asian Pacific Heritage Month, Jewish American Heritage Month. Uh, it is also Mental Health Awareness Month. And as a high school principal, I just want to pause here and say how deeply important it is to make sure that we're checking in with our students, particularly our teenagers during this time. Um, so again, thank you for the support you've done. Uh, I, I know all counselors uh, are available at schools across uh, KIPP Texas San Antonio. Um, and so if you have, if you have needs or, or your student has needs, uh, don't hesitate to contact the school and we want to be for there, there for you and for your child. 
Estos son los anuncios que tenemos en este mes de mayo, que es tan importante. Como pueden ver, son muchas las celebraciones que tenemos, pero queremos enfocarnos muy especialmente en el mes de la concientización de la salud mental, ya que nuestros alumnos han eh, pasado por un año difícil y queremos hacerles saber que nuestros consejeros, no nada más en Keep San Antonio, en todo Keep Texas, están dispuestos y disponibles para ayudar y para apoyar a nuestros estudiantes. Wow, so celebrating National Charter School Week. Uh, and then this week, Teacher Appreciation Week, we've had a great week at school where we've uh, tried to bring some smiles to our teachers' faces. Your students have been so sweet uh, in expressing their gratitude uh, as well this week. Sunday, I'm looking forward to Mother's Day uh, personally, and I'm excited to celebrate my own mom. Uh, Eid Afetir is coming, and then also we just passed Cinco de Mayo, so lots to celebrate this month. De igual manera, estamos festejando la Semana Nacional de las Escuelas Charter, la Semana de Apreciación a los Maestros. Gracias por todos los detalles que han tenido con nuestros maestros, se los agradecemos. También estaremos festejando el Día de las Madres y Figuras, y figuras Maternas, y eh, el día de ayer pudimos festejar el 5 de mayo. And uh, I believe this is over to you, Jackie. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. I'm the San Antonio Regional Advocacy Manager. Along with me this evening is our entire KIPP Texas Advocacy Team. It's our Deputy Chief of Advocacy, Ms. Addy Gomez. She joins us from Austin. We have our Regional Manager from Houston as well, and Brandon Vance is joining us from Dallas-Fort Worth. All of our regions are represented tonight. As we safely start returning back into our in-person events, we'll be more visible in the community and we hope to see you more often. It's important for us to share a little bit of background information on KIPP Texas advocacy before we decide to jump into our conversation. Here at KIPP Texas, we have a rich history of civic engagement connecting elected officials with our, our students and our classrooms, connecting them with our communities. When we're raising our voices individually, as a team, as an organization, as our community, we're advocating for everyone, every one of our Kipsters. Our little Kipsters, our students, we're advocating for access to their learning, whether it's virtual or in person. We're advocating for our big Kipsters, our teachers, uh, we're advocating for access to the COVID vaccine so the teachers feel comfortable performing the job that they love. When we say KIPP Texas has a rich history of civic engagement, KIPP Texas has a rich history of civic engagement. How exactly does KIPP Texas incorporate advocacy into our work as a public school? What does this mean? What does this look like? Well, we have three guiding principles that center our focus. Alex. No. So much. Gracias. Eh, le queremos dar la bienvenida a Jackie, que es nuestra defensora regional de San Antonio. La acompañan los defensores eh, regionales de cada de otras regiones de Keep Texas, de Houston, así como de Dallas. Eh, este equipo de defensa está aquí para apoyar a los padres de familia. Es, es, es quien, les, quien les da voz a todas sus inquietudes y a todas sus preguntas dentro del de distrito escolar o dentro de la región de Keep Texas. Ellos trabajan bajo tres principios eh, que a continuación Jackie va a comentar con nosotros. Thank you. Our nonpartisan, nonpolitical, Keep Texas is a 501c3 nonprofit and a public school, which means that legally we cannot and we will not show preference for any political ideology. Candidates, propositions, we won't do that. Bien, el primer principio es que en Keep Texas no somos partidistas, no apoyamos a ningún partido, ni estamos afiliados a ningún partido político. This is a core principle for us because not only do we educate here at KIPP Texas, but we also employ and welcome people to the KIPP Texas community from all backgrounds. And our role as an advocacy team is to provide those opportunities to connect everyone together. Esto es muy importante para nosotros ya que como región en KIPP Texas, nosotros contratamos a cualquier maestro o maestra de cualquier raza o etnia sin importar su preferencia política. Es así como nos manejamos en KIPP y no apoyamos a ningún partido. Our equity lens first. 
our responsibility to understand policy proposals and weigh those against not only the best interests of our students, but more importantly, through an equity lens that considers the best interests for all Texas public students. Nuestro siguiente principio tiene que ver con la equidad. Es muy importante para nosotros trabajarlo con, con las leyes que realmente son equitativas para nuestros padres de familia, nuestros alumnos y para nuestros maestros. Yes, we focus a lot of our work on charter school specific issues, but we also closely follow and support broader educational and social justice proposals. Y sí, eh, apoyamos mucho eh, los puntos de equidad en cuanto a las escuelas charter, pero también eh, en la educación en general. Together with families and communities. This is also the opening line to the KIPP Texas mission statement, and it truly grounds the work we do across the entire organization. Y por último, nuestro tercer principio es trabajar juntos con las familias y comunidades. Esto nos permite trabajar juntos como región, como equipo y familia en la educación de sus hijos. From a civic engagement lens, this means that we see ourselves as agents of empowerment and connection to our families. El trabajo que esto representa para nosotros es que somos unos aliados de ustedes y bajo estos tres principios trabajamos para los estudiantes. The advocacy team, we're like songbirds. We're ready and happy to speak up when we're needed, but the real stories of power are the stories that are shared by our families, by our students, and by our teachers. En el equipo de defensores de KIPP Texas, estamos listos para trabajar por ustedes. Estamos listos para defender los valores que nos representan por ustedes y para ustedes. And once again, our job is not to tell you what to think or how to dictate what your talking points are, but to instead build those meaningful relationships so anyone in KIPP Texas who wants to be engaged can come to us at any time. Y queremos recordarles que no, nuestra intención no es decirles lo que tienen que decir o cómo tienen que pensar. Al contrario, queremos trabajar juntos para trabajar en un equipo de equidad donde cada quien tenga voz y voto y que sepan que estamos aquí para defendernos. Right now, we're watching closely as debates about charter schools continue in the Texas Capitol and it's heating up. En este momento estamos eh, muy al pendiente de las conversaciones que están ocurriendo en el Capitolio acerca de las leyes que puedan implicar a las escuelas charter. So joining our superintendent this evening, we have some of our own families who've shared their stories with us, and now they want to share them with you all. Y eh, uh, tenemos a nuestro superintendente con nosotros, y de igual manera tenemos a padres de familia que han compartido sus historias y que están acompañándonos esta noche para compartirlas con todos ustedes. So tonight we have Miss Garza, who's a Kipster parent of over 10 years, joining us. We have Mr. Pedro Cruz, who's a Kipster parent for over seven years. And we also have Mr. Edgar Cruz, who's a Kipster himself and has been for the last seven years. Tenemos a Miss Garza, que ha sido una, una madre de familia por 10 años, al señor Cruz, que ha estado con nosotros por siete años, y a el joven Cruz, un estudiante actual de la Universidad Kip University, perdón, de la Escuela Kip University Prep, que ha estado por seis años con Kip. And we thank you for your time this evening. So now leading our conversation is our regional superintendent. Muchas gracias y a continuación los dejo con nuestro superintendente. Thank you, Alex, and, and thank you, Abby and Jackie and Addie, uh, all of our staff um, who is with us, Chelsea and Nick. We appreciate you for being here on this most important evening uh, when we have this conversation. Muchas gracias a todos, padres de familia, staff y comunidad, pa, eh, en este día tan importante donde, donde vamos a tomar temas eh, muy relevantes para nuestro futuro. This, this conversation is uh, near and dear to my heart, and it is one um, that is truly about adults and not about students. Charters um, and traditional schools, or however you want to uh, categorize them, uh, should not be in opposition. Esta conversación tiene que ver mucho con los adultos y no nada más con los estudiantes. 
Las escuelas charter tienen gran responsabilidad en nuestra educación y es el tema que vamos a estar tomando el día de hoy. Why do I say that? Uh, I say that because uh, in the 200 plus years of public education, uh, what we have seen, and these are facts, uh, is students of color, students that are the most marginalized and students with uh, disabilities uh, have not been largely successful in our public education system. ¿Por qué digo esto? Lo digo porque en la historia, en más de 200 años, los estudiantes que representan a las minorías han sido los estudiantes que menos éxito han tenido en su educación. It is a fact that black and brown boys uh, will graduate from high school at very low percentages uh, in the teens. And even less of them will graduate from college. We're talking single digits. For our female students, uh, black and brown, they will graduate uh, with higher numbers, but still many of them will not graduate from college. Es un hecho que los estudiantes afroamericanos e hispanos son, son quien representan el menor porcentaje de éxito en las universidades. De hecho, en eh, dígitos eh, menores al 10%. Entonces, es muy importante que sepamos este dato y esto no ha cambiado. These are the students who we primarily serve. And it is so important to understand that in the state of Texas, if you are born in any of these three areas, it is 96% likely that you will die in any of these three areas. Es muy importante que sepamos que estos son los estudiantes a los que servimos en Keep Texas. La, mayor de, la mayoría de los estudiantes provienen de estas etnias o de estas razas. Y también es importante que sepan que el 96% de ellos fallecerán de la siguiente manera. So my passion in having this conversation is not to tell you what to do, but is to equip you with the facts about what is and what it is. Entonces, lo que yo quiero comentarles hoy es no el qué, sino el cómo de las cosas para que podamos tomar mejores decisiones. And here's the truth of the matter. Not one of our parents sends their students to school regardless of whether it's a charter or traditional school, thinking that their students is going to get a less than education. They want the best for their students. Ninguno de nuestros padres de familia quiere que sus estudiantes eh, no terminen la, la, la universidad. Todos, el 100% de nuestros padres, quieren lo mejor para sus hijos como estudiantes, y es lo mismo que queremos nosotros. They are not saving their best students and keeping them at home and sending us their worst students. They are sending us their pride and joy. And regardless of if it's a public school, traditional or a charter school, they have a right to a fair and quality education. Estos padres de familia o como padres de familia no están dejando a los mejores o a, las, a, la, a la mejor versión de sus hijos en casa. Los padres de familia envían a sus hijos, a nuestras escuelas, como su más grande orgullo. Y no importa si es una escuela charter, privada o pública, todos merecen y eh, están esperando la mejor educación. So I know that this is a, a troubling issue for many of you. It is a very troubling issue for me. And I, I just really want to come together uh, and talk about it, have a conversation about it, because we have a right to make sure that all of the kids that we serve and every student that walks through our doors uh, has a right to dream with their eyes open. Quiero decirles que este tema es muy importante para mí porque estoy comprometido en la educación de los estudiantes y estoy convencido que cada estudiante que viene a nuestras escuelas viene a estudiar, a lograr sus sueños con los ojos abiertos. So how do these debates inside the Capitol that are largely focused on adults on different political platforms impact our schools. Entonces, ¿cómo estos debates que se llevan a cabo en el Capitolio 
es que tienen un impacto en nuestras escuelas. I can answer that, and then I want to hear from you. The real reason that these issues are uh, in conversation is because people have different political views, uh, different political funders, and different ways to go about it that are not always in the best interest of every single person that they serve. Tengo la respuesta a esta pregunta, se las voy a hacer llegar y después quiero escuchar sus comentarios. Las personas que promueven estas leyes en el Capitolio vienen de distintas ideologías y no todas son del mejor interés para nuestros estudiantes. And I can say that with confidence because the data says the same thing. If it were not uh, truthful, what I was saying then we would have an education system that would truly understand the equitable rights of each and every student that comes and sits in our seats and wants to go to school, graduate from high school, and be able to go to college or pursue any post-secondary education and actually live out the dream that is, that is stated in our Constitution. Puedo decir esto con confianza basado en los datos que obtenemos, pero también puedo decirles que tenemos que mantenernos firmes en nuestra misión y en nuestra visión para que los estudiantes puedan lograr su objetivo y su meta en la universidad. So you've seen the information that we sent out this week. You've watched some of the video clips and I would like to hear from our panelists What does it feel like for you when you watch these debates about charter schools uh, and traditional schools at the Capitol? Hemos estado enviando información a los padres de familia and han tenido la oportunidad de ver videos sobre estos debates que se han estado llevando a cabo en el Capitolio. Y me gustaría preguntar a uno de los padres de familia cuáles son sus sentim su sentimientos, sus emociones entre este debate sobre las escuelas charters y las escuelas públicas. Ms. Garza, let's start with you on that question. Ms. Garza, comencemos con usted con esta pregunta. Well, I just see that the focus is not really concentrating on the, the child overall and the, as far as their the curriculum. And what I see is that they're mainly wanting to divide the students instead of having them come together and find out where the, the teachers can better serve them, you know, instead of, you know, oh, they don't, they're not giving them a choice, the choice based on, you know, how the child has progressed, you know, versus the, a traditional school in comparison to uh, a charter school. Thank you. Miss, Miss Garza, I want to ask you a follow-up question. When you Alex, selected wait. Kip, wait go for ahead. Alex. Wait for Alex. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, eh, quiero decirles que eh, el enfoque que le dan al, a los alumnos en estos debates no es del todo justo. Están tratando de crear división y eso es lo que más eh, me molesta en este momento, que no, no le dan el enfoque real al estudiante como tal, como ser humano y como eh, estudiante como tal. Ms. Garza, a follow-up question. When you selected KIPP for your students over 10 years ago, were you looking at whether this is a traditional school or a charter school, or were you looking at what was going to best suit your students' needs? La siguiente, was... may I translate the question? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, sir. Uh, la siguiente pregunta, Ms. Garza, es, hace 10 años cuando usted eligió uh, una escuela charter para inscribir a su hijo, ¿En qué estaba pensando? ¿Qué es lo que estaba buscando? ¿Una escuela charter, una escuela tradicional o una escuela que, que tuviera eh, los mejores elementos que cumplieran con las expectativas para la educación de su hijo? Okay, well, me being a public student myself, and then when I learned about KIPP, when my um, three older children, I was, you know, wanting, I heard about KIPP, um, when they, they came here. So I wanted to put them there because I already knew as a student and as an aunt, what my nieces and nephews were going through. So then when my daughter, Elizabeth, who is at UPREP, 
when she started school, I wanted to put her um, at my public school where I went because one, uh, we were going through some family issues. So um, I had family to back me up. So then, you know, she was accepted here at Collins Garden, which is, you know, here by Kip. Um, and so when my daughter passed through the third grade, um, you know, she was having challenges and I brought those issues to the, the school. Um, and they were like, she became more like an obstacle. She did, they didn't address her needs as a student first and foremost, and then also help, you know, with any support services. So she then was, she passed through the third grade. And then in October uh, 6, they, I was informed by her teacher that she had to leave. They threw her out basically. And the thing that they told me was that I didn't have anything in place as far as her, she, she is in the East Central School District. So, you know, they, they told me for the first two years, they, you know, the first three years, everything was in place. But the thing what happened is that they were more concerned about their failing status because Collins Garden had to, then was gonna run the risk of getting shut down. So the teacher, you know, never brought it to my attention. I was called by the principal, Ms. De La Garza. She said I had to leave and, it, and, it, and my daughter had to get out. So then she told me, you know, if you do not leave, she cannot be here. She's in violation of all the requirements. And even though I disputed that, I called TEA and they told me, you know, that she was in the wrong. So on top of that, I had to find a school that she, my daughter was not the only one that was gonna be booted out along with any failing student. So they care more about their status versus, you know, wanting to educate my daughter to help her with those needs. So she was gonna reform me to truancy. So then I in turn ended up, um, she kept my daughter's school supplies and I in turn went up to Highlands Hills. From then I went to another school because throughout all that, it impacted my daughter. So she was in fully focus, went through Highland Hills and New Frontiers, the same issue she encountered. I then called uh, Kip because, you know, that was what I had wanted first and foremost for all my four children. So when I had that opportunity, I immediately saw the unity there. I saw how they embraced her and you know, you know, they had to test her and this and that, but they were, you know, tweaking her needs and kept me informed and making sure that she became, you know, her education was addressed rather than her being an obstacle, her being just a project or a number. So I had that comparison between a, a charter school and a public school. And so, you know, that was my whole intent is for her to, to be, have that support, have that backup, have that, you know, that, hey, she was failing, that she wasn't just going to be thrown out. They, to, from because of that dedication, now she is and um, still continuing to where now she is, you know, being successful and the same um, tailgating is there for her, meaning that they're on her. They make sure that she's focused. They make sure she's missing an assignment, that she doesn't understand it, that they reach out and, you know, back and forth. It's a team, so that's what, um, it's, you know, got me going, and that's why where she is, where she's at, where she's finally flourishing as a student, and you know, will continue there. Thank you, Alex. Muchas gracias eh, por compartirlo. Eh, la la verdad es que escogí una escuela eh, tradicional porque esa fue mi educación, esa fue mi experiencia como estudiante y fue mi primera opción. Eh, mi hija al principio, eh, o alrededor del tercer grado, empezó a tener problemas en la escuela y lejos de recibir apoyo, me hicieron sentir que mi hija era un obstáculo, eh, que era un reto para esa escuela. Eh, obviamente esto me hizo sentir mucha frustración, me comuniqué con la Agencia de Educación de Texas, me dijeron o me hicieron saber que la escuela estaba en su derecho de eh, hacerme saber que no, no podía pertenecer a esa institución. Entonces, al sentir este rechazo y sentir que mi hija era un problema para esta escuela, es que volteé a esta escuela charter, donde pude notar una diferencia 
enorme donde encontré apoyo, donde encontré un sentimiento de equipo y, y familia y donde me han hecho sentir que mi hija es parte de un proyecto sólido, de una misión sólida y donde puedo ver un camino más eh, seguro al éxito. Es por eso que eh, hoy estoy agradecida y eh, por una de las razones por las por las cuales continúo en Keep Texas. Thank you, Alex. So I want to come to to now you, Edgar, as a student, and then go to Mr. Cruz. But as you hear these arguments and you heard the two questions that I asked, uh, tell me about your thoughts. Ahora quiero escuchar uh, primero de ti, Edgar, y después de usted, señor Cruz. Ya escuchaste las dos preguntas que, que acabo de realizar. ¿Cuáles son tus sentimientos? ¿Cuáles son tus ideas y tus pensamientos, Edgar? Uh, after hearing Ms. Garza's story, I think it was Ms. Garza's, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with her because the, this charter system that we were in, KIPP, is, is truly, truly amazing in a sense because compared to how her experience was in the public system where they kind of portrayed her daughter as a problem here at KIPP, that that's never the issue that's never been the issue the teachers never really give up on the students it, i think they always find solutions they make solutions because when there's a will there's a way uh it's been the same for me i've sometimes struggled in school and it's not due to anything, not my behavior, not at all. It's just sometimes students break down and they've always helped me find a path back to kind of be academically ready again. And I think that's something very nice about the charter system, especially this one, given that it's a bit smaller and sometimes less is more given that the fact that there's more time for one-on-one -on -one time with students and teachers which I really, really love because I think at the most, I've only had around 20 students in my class, which gives one teacher, maybe even two, a perfect amount of time to be able to work with everybody and see everybody's individual needs and to help people who are falling behind or need a little bit more help. I think that's something I love about this school because they, they make you believe that you can do anything and they give you the tools and they help you, they give you the resources. Gracias, Edgar. Uh, Edgar comenta que eh, está de acuerdo con la señora Garza en que KIPP es una escuela completamente diferente a las escuelas tradicionales o a las escuelas públicas tradicionales. Edgar comenta que eh, esta escuela es más pequeña, pero a veces menos significa más, ya que reciben una atención más personalizada. Y a pesar de no ser perfecta, porque como estudiantes también tienen sus días buenos y días malos, eh, siempre han encontrado apoyo con los maestros para regresarlos al camino académico y seguirlos motivando para lograr su objetivo de ir a la universidad. So, Edgar, I have one more question. I want to clarify something very quickly because for a lot of people who don't understand this, uh, traditional schools and charter schools, uh, as we stand, are both uh, public education organizations and systems. Okay, we both get our funding from the, the majority of our funding from the state. Um, we are not taking away funding from traditional education systems. We operate in the same manner. We are not a for profit organization. Uh, and many people do not understand that because that is not what is being told to you. But the fact is, That is the truth. Quisiera aclarar un punto muy importante, Edgar, es que las escuelas charters y las escuelas tradicionales reciben sus fondos de la misma manera, es decir, a través del Estado. Sin embargo, les han hecho creer que esto no es así. Las escuelas charter reciben los fondos, repito, al igual que las escuelas tradicionales, pero eh, eh, tenemos otro tipo de, de, de números en cuanto a los estudiantes. Great. And so the question that I have for you, Edgar, knowing that a public school, public traditional school, a charter school are pretty much the same. It's how you choose, what you choose. I want to ask you a question about your friends. 
you've been in KIPP for seven years. How many of your friends that came from a traditional education system were falling behind and now how many of them are succeeding in KIPP? Quisiera hacerte una pregunta, Edgar, después de esta aclaración, ya que tienes siete años en KIPP University Prep. De tus compañeros que han venido de una escuela tradicional a KIPP, ¿cuántos de ellos que estaban en una situación eh, un poco apremiante, o es decir, no aprobando sus clases, han mejorado? ¿Cuántos de ellos has notado que han cambiado en su nivel académico? I would say for sure that um, the level of academic readiness has increased a, an, a, I would say a, a really good amount. There's really no way to truly describe it. Even from the early stages, like in sixth grade, seventh grade and eighth grade, uh, a lot of my friends were coming from a public system and sometimes English wasn't their, learn, their first language, which they were falling behind. Um, and they just struggled for the most part. But by eighth grade, the same kid that didn't know um that didn't really know spanish was scoring very high on the star test like if i'm if i stand correct it's second in the entire class and i think there's a correlation there between um what's it called sorry um sorry my, uh there's a correlation there between um why am i stuttering so much i'm so sorry guys you're fine so uh, is it a correlation between English as a second language and what is being taught? Or how the test is, or how they be, are being prepared for the, the test? Kind of how the past experience, because um, as we had mentioned earlier, um, although the charter system and the public system all operate under most of the state funding, I think that the public system goes about very differently how they treat um, people who have certain disabilities or struggle in learning, or in, in my friend's case, in the specific friend who didn't know much um, English. And they make them feel as if they are less than when really these students have so much potential. Each student has so much potential. And you could really see it grow, especially in the early stages. And not to mention in high school, where they are allowed to creatively explore themselves and yeah, most definitely. Great. Bien, una de las diferencias más grandes que yo he notado en mis compañeros que han venido de las escuelas públicas tradicionales es el apoyo o la falta de apoyo que ellos recibieron en dichas escuelas. Muchos de ellos venían eh, con español como, como primer idioma y eh, la respuesta que recibieron en las escuelas tradicionales no fue la adecuada, no los hacían sentir capaces. Y Edgar menciona que todos los alumnos son importantes y todos tienen un gran potencial. Esa es la diferencia en que estos compañeros de Edgar pudieron encontrar ese apoyo, esa diferenciación de sus maestros y ahora están en un nivel académico mucho más alto eh, a que si se hubieran quedado en las escuelas tradicionales. Edgar, thank you. You're a young man that I'm very proud of speaking up, owning your truth. Uh, and having the courage to, to speak among the adults. We appreciate you. Muchas gracias, Edgar, por tu compromiso, tu valor y tu entrega, y por estar con nosotros hablando de estos temas con adultos. Mr. Cruz, I come to you, sir, uh, and, and want to ask you these questions. When you hear these debates at the Texas State, State Capitol, um, how do they impact you and what you're, you're thinking and our schools? Señor Cruz, ahora voy con usted. Cuando escucha estos debates en el Capitolio entre escuelas tradicionales y, y, y escuelas charters, ¿cuál es el impacto? ¿Cómo recibe usted estas noticias? Sí, buenas tardes. Eh, eh, lo que he podido notar, eh, desafortunadamente a un nivel político, eh, los intereses no están enfocados precisamente en los estudiantes. Hay otro tipo de intereses eh, meramente políticos y se olvidan de lo que es el la, punto principal, que es la educación de los, de los muchachos. Mas, sin embargo, en comparación al sistema público tradicional, al sistema de KEP, siento yo, en mi opinión muy humilde, muy personal, 
que la gran diferencia lo hace el equipo de trabajo, llámese maestros, llámese staff. Eso es lo que hace la diferencia entre eh, las escuelas KEP y las escuelas de sistema público tradicional. El apoyo que siempre los estudiantes tienen por parte de los uh, maestros, eso, eso viene a marcar una gran diferencia. Todo el equipo que se proporciona a los estudiantes, eh, también eso es algo que hay que sembrar allá, que es, una, una, es algo muy importante. Y algo también que yo considero que es muy importante es la gran comunicación que hay entre directores, subdirectores, maestros, directamente con los padres de familia. Eso de, de alguna manera hace un gran impacto porque nosotros como padres de familia estamos uh, muy, muy, muy informados por distintas vías, eh, correo electrónico, textos, siempre estamos en comunicación con todos ustedes y eso eh, para nosotros es una gran ventaja para poder ayudar a la educación de nuestros hijos. I want to say that uh, the biggest impact that I noticed is the political focus that people at the Capitol are having uh, while discussing these issues. They're not looking into the students as a human being. They are just focusing on politics. One of the biggest differences that I noticed between uh, charter and the traditional school system is the support that CAPE is offering to us as parents. We get a lot of phone calls, a lot of communication. We know exactly what's going on on a daily basis. And I also uh, see the big support that our students are having from teachers and that's the quality that Keep Texas is offering versus the quality uh, versus the education the traditional schools are doing. Thank you. Second question, uh, Mr. Mr. Cruz. Why did you select Kip? La siguiente pregunta es por qué escogió Kip, Mr. Cruz. Nosotros originalmente somos de una ciudad al sur de Texas, muy pequeña, que se llama Laredo, y Los primeros años de educación de mis hijos estuvieron en, una, en un sistema privado, en una escuela católica. Y por cuestiones de trabajo y del futuro, nos tuvimos que trasladar a San Antonio. Y nuestro gran temor era, uno de nuestros gran tem grandes temores era llevarlos a un sistema público. Porque conocemos los problemas que existen en, en las escuelas públicas y que aparte del gran número de estudiantes que se manejan Escuelas. Afortunadamente, eh, topamos con, con las escuelas KEP y nos llama mucho la atención por uh, el a nivel académico que manejan. En lo personal, algo que me agradó mucho también es la gran disciplina que manejan. Eh, eso, es, eso es algo que a mí siempre me, me llamó mucho la atención. Me gusta porque de, a, junto con la disciplina va la educación. Si hay una buena disciplina, ayuda mucho a tener una buena educación. Entonces, eh, eso fue lo que nos inclinó. Eh, ver el, el sistema que maneja, maneja KEP, la, eh, la, la, la educación, la disciplina y sobre todo el tamaño de escuela, que no, 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 son, no, no son escuelas que tienen demasiados estudiantes. Los grupos son pequeños. Y vuelvo a lo mismo, eh, recaigo en lo mismo una atención muy, muy personalizada por parte de todos los maestros. We are coming from a small town in South Texas, Laredo. And when we moved to San Antonio, we were looking for a small uh, school. We knew that we didn't want to send our kids or our children to big, uh, to big schools in a bigger uh, district because the numbers they manage are huge. And it was important to us to send our students, our children to a smaller school, more centralized, where they can get a better education. And that's exactly what we found at KIPP. And I think that's the biggest difference uh, between uh, bigger schools and KIPP. Uh, the numbers they manage, uh, the focus they work on with our students, and we are very pleased about it. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. I applaud you for being a parent that is involved and engaged in your students' education. Gracias, señor Cruz. Le aplaudo el compromiso y que siga confiando en Keep Texas. Al contrario, gracias a ustedes por un, un gran equipo de trabajo, un equipo que se preocupa por la educación de nuestros hijos. 
un equipo que está preocupado por el futuro de nuestro país. Entonces, eh, gracias a ustedes. El, el aplauso es para ustedes. Porque hacen mucho tra trabajo muy duro. Thank you and likewise, uh, the applause is to you all. You do a tremendous job. You work really, really hard and we are very thankful. So here's the next question. And I think we might have time for one, just this one. Uh, but I want to uh, put some context behind it. Um, that a movement is started oftentimes by a small but robust voice that truly is passionate about what they are fighting for and, and knows that they will never give up on the fight. And my grandmother told me to always fight the good fight, even when it hurts. We're fighting the good fight. So have you ever reached out to your lawmakers and voice what you are telling us tonight? Quisiera hacer una última pregunta. Creo que tenemos para una última pregunta, pero antes quisiera darles un poco de contexto. Uh, mientras se llevan a cabo estas discusiones, estos debates en el Capitolio, eh, yo he aprendido con el paso del tiempo que vale la pena luchar esas batallas que son buenas batallas, las batallas que hay que ganar. Mi pregunta es la siguiente. ¿Están dispuestos o han, se han comunicado con los políticos que deciden estas leyes en el Capitolio para expresar sus preocupaciones y tratar de ganar esta batalla que vale la pena ganar? Sí, definitivamente. Perdón. Go ahead, Mr. Cruz. Sí, definitivamente, al menos en tres, cuatro ocasiones hemos tenido la oportunidad de ir al Capitol acompañado de un, un grupo muy grande de maestros, de, de padres de familia, y hemos, eh, hemos tenido la oportunidad de manifestar nuestras, nuestras necesidades, nuestras uh, incógnitas y ver de qué forma eh, nuestros representantes eh, finalmente están ahí por designación pública, eh, hacen al, algo al respecto para podernos apoyar. Pero sí, sí hemos tenido la oportunidad y cada vez que se da esa oportunidad la aprovechamos y hacemos acto de presencia en el Capitolio. Mr. Cruz is saying that he has done it for at least three or four times with a nice group of teachers that have gone to the Capitol and voiced their concerns. Uh, They've done it, they will continue doing it. And um, yes, he's done it three or four times. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Garza, same question. Ms. Garza, la misma pregunta. Uh, uh, at the beginning I did, but then uh, I haven't lately nor have I uh, been asked to uh, participate. Um, when I was, when the school was in, on Fredericksburg Road We did have that going out there and promoting it, but I haven't seen that again. Um, but um, I, I, of course, I'll be willing to do it, you know, to promote the school and and offer the parents, you know, any literature brochure as far as what Kip has available for the students. But um, I'm all for that, you know, to be a positive influence for the school and for my daughter and share her experience, the more more um, support for, for the families because there's another Elizabeth out there. Um, and so I want to reach out and be an advocate to the parents that, you know, they feel that they don't have a voice, but that I would want to reassure them that they do have a voice and what is available, you know, knowing that my daughter, her experience needs to be heard You know, she could be that poster child for another child. Well, you know, uh, I want to be that voice for that that next Kipster, you know, or you prepper. But but that's my been my experience. Thank you. Sí, lo he hecho. Lo he hecho eh, una vez hace unos años cuando el campus se encontraba en la cara en la calle de Fredericksburg. Eh, sin embargo, no quiere decir que no esté interesado eh, interesada en hacerlo. Eh, las veces que sean necesarias, ya que estoy convencida que eh, hay más Elizabeth, es decir, más estudiantes en la misma situación de mi hija y tenemos que darle voz a esos estudiantes para que reciban el apoyo que yo recibí hacia mi hija Elizabeth. Así es que estoy dispuesta a eh, 
dar mi voz y asistir a estos, a estos debates para mejorar la situación de los alumnos, de las alumnas y los alumnos que lo necesiten. So, Edgar, before I say this, you're a young man, right? And, and, and first, let me also say this. I am so glad that you gave your dad a shout out in the chat. Um, that, that says who you are as a young man, and it says a lot about your character. Edgar, antes de eh, hacerte otra pregunta, quiero agradecerte públicamente el que hayas reconocido a tu papá eh, con un comentario en el chat. Habla completamente de la integridad y de la persona que tú eres. So, Cesar Chavez, right? Martin Luther King. Um, some of the biggest crusaders for civil rights and fighting for justice were young men when they started their crusade. You are young men. Have you used your voice to talk to lawmakers? Bien, eh, antes de que contestes tu pregunta, Edgar, eh, Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, dos de los líderes más importantes en los movimientos civiles comenzaron su lucha cuando eran muy jóvenes, tan jóvenes como tú. Tú siendo un joven, has considerado el dar voz y hablar con estas personas que escriben estas leyes en el Capitolio. Um, as my father had mentioned, we have had the opportunity to speak um, to the lawmakers and the, basically the leaders of the Capitol. Um, however, at the time that we, I had gone, I was a bit too young. I still didn't know much about what was going on in the public system and education. Um, but I think definitely now, I think something, uh, sorry, I'm just hearing a little bit off the question. I think something that I would say to a, uh, lawmaker or a leader is to always keep the children's interests in mind because the children's in the children are our future. Uh, I am the future. Um, although we may have the uh, innovation and the ideas to make a better tomorrow, we always need to be given the right resources, correct guidance. And I think, as my father had mentioned, if certain political leaders or parties have specific agendas, uh, it, it's not helping us at all because they're just keeping their own self-interest in mind and they're not helping uh, the leaders of tomorrow. And most definitely, I think in the future, I would like to get uh, involved with my son, like my father has with me, thanks dad, uh, to kind of pave a better tomorrow for my children. But, you know, the future kind of starts today and I'm kind of glad that, um, this is going on right now because it can only <laughs> it can only grow from here uh, definitely i think also setting an example is very important to um, our children that if they want something if they want something better that they need to go work for it and that's definitely something i want to pass on to my children como dijo mi padre eh... Al principio hemos tenido la oportunidad de acudir al Capitolio. Eh, sin embargo, cuando acudí, yo era muy pequeño, era, era muy chico y no entendía muy bien lo que, estaban, lo que estaba ocurriendo. No, no, no entendía muy bien el proceso de las leyes. Uh, sin embargo, ahora es diferente. Y lo único que les pido a estos políticos que deciden las leyes de educación es que siempre tengan en mente a los estudiantes y las decisiones que tomen sean por y para los estudiantes. Nosotros somos el futuro. Yo soy el futuro. Y así como mi padre me ha inculcado estos valores, quiero yo inculcarle los mismos a mis propios hijos. Así es que sí, la respuesta es, quiero ser parte activa de estas leyes, quiero dar mi voz y estoy dispuesto a ir al Capitolio y eh, aportar para que estas leyes siempre sean escritas en favor y con los estudiantes en mente. Gracias, Edgar. Thank you. We, we, we have time for one question, but let me say this to Mr. Cruz, young Mr. Cruz and Ms. Uh, Garza. Um, you have given me the energy to continue the fight. You have said things that are so important, and I want to encourage you um, to let your voice be heard, to make sure that you go out and do the things um, that you know are right. 
because here's why. Other people are letting their voice be heard. And you have the same right. And if we speak as loud as they're speaking, then something is going to have to change. Bien, antes que, que nada, Ms. Garza, uh, Edgar, Señor Cruz, quiero agradecerles por sus comentarios y por sus respuestas. Ustedes me han dado el ánimo para seguir luchando esta lucha. Y quiero compartir con ustedes que así como hay personas que utilizan su voz y dan voz en el Capitolio, eh, los invito a que ustedes hagan lo mismo. Porque si esas voces han logrado un pequeño cambio y agregamos sus voces y agregamos nuestras voces, algo tiene que ocurrir. Un cambio tiene que ocurrir y algo positivo va a pasar. So I'm encouraging you to let your voice be heard. Make phone calls, send letters, do what you have to do to let your voice be heard. And I guarantee you that we will make a difference. Así que los exhorto, los invito a que utilicen sus voces, a que sus voces sean escuchadas, hagan llamadas, manden correos. Los invito a que utilicen su voz y eh, van a comprobar que vamos a lograr un cambio. All right, we have time for one question. Is there a question um, that anyone wants to ask us? Tenemos tiempo para una pregunta. ¿Hay alguien que tenga alguna pregunta? Ellen, if there aren't any from the group, I did have one um, that, that's been asked of us, and Jackie can probably answer this one. Right now, with three weeks left in the legislative session, what is the best way to reach your lawmaker? Tenemos una sola pregunta que Jackie nos va a hacer el favor de contestar, y la pregunta es la siguiente. Con tres semanas que restan en el año escolar, y eh, durante estas tres semanas donde se está llevando a cabo la legislatura, ¿Cómo podemos contactarnos con los oficiales que escriben estas leyes para lograr un cambio o una diferencia? Yes, thank you. I'm happy to answer that question. So with three weeks left, now is the time for us to call our lawmakers. Like our superintendent said, phone calls, emails, any form or fashion we can get a hold of them. They're ready to listen to us. We need to speak up loudly and proudly. Um, we have in our chat box a link to our exit ticket and in there's more specific information on who exactly represents us here in San Antonio. Bien, sí, la respuesta es la siguiente, quedando tres semanas de esta agenda de legislación, eh, es muy importante que se comuniquen con las personas que están escribiendo estas leyes. Háganlo de la manera eh, más conveniente, puede ser con una llamada eh, telefónica, puede ser a través de un correo electrónico. Uh, de igual manera les comunico que en el chat a uh, mano derecha pueden encontrar un enlace donde van a encontrar una encuesta de salida a esta presentación con información importante sobre las personas encargadas de escribir estas leyes que afectan especialmente a nuestra comunidad. Great, Jackie, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, parents, students, families, everyone, community here, staff members for joining us. Um, thank you for all who have shared and opened up their personal details, you know, their personal stories with us. Keep sharing. Keep letting your voices be heard loudly and proudly. Um, our timing right now, it is the end of the year, but it is also the end of the legislative sessions. So us as agents of empowerment, our timing for action is now. Queremos agradecer padres de familia, maestros, estudiantes por acompañarnos en esta asamblea y recordarles que estamos al final del año, pero también al final de la sesión legislativa. Así es que este es el momento de hablar, de usar nuestras voces para lograr un cambio en estas leyes que impacten de manera positiva a nuestros estudiantes. Thank you again for joining us. Please be sure to fill out the exit ticket. We not only appreciate your feedback, but we value your opinion and we want to make improvements where you feel improvements should be made. Muchas gracias a todos. De nueva cuenta, les recordamos eh, que les dejamos una encuesta de salida. No nada más valoramos su retroalimentación. También es muy importante para nosotros el recibirla. Así es que eh, si tienen un segundo, por favor, Completen esta encuesta de salida y nuevamente muchas gracias y buenas noches. 
and the exit ticket is in the chat box. Uh, click the link. Thank you. Correcto. El, el, la encuesta de salida se encuentra en la ventana del chat. Eh, denle clic al enlace y esto los lleva a esta encuesta. Gracias. Thank you all and have a great night. Gracias y muy buenas noches a todos.